Hey students of DTK1234, yesterday one of your module mates called Zhi Heng has sent in a series of really excellent questions. Um, it's obvious that Ji Heng had been thinking and grappling with segment one and the exercises in there. And therefore the questions are very well um, thought through. So Ji Heng, thank you for sending this in and wording your questions in a really clear and thoughtful manner. Um, I want to share the answers to these questions so that it will benefit everyone else in the module. Now let's look at the questions sent in. Can we pair more than one sub-problem with a single solution? Now, Zheng is probably talking about this point where you are writing your sub-statement and then you branch them out into uh, many sub-problems or root cause problems and then you have solution ideas that come in the form of these green post-its. And it's probably the situation where um, Zhi Heng had some good ideas that could kill multiple birds with one stone, right? And therefore, some of these post-its that are created eventually uh, felt like they could be combined together as um, one proposition. Now, um, it really depends, right? Uh, because it could either be a situation where you are killing two birds with one stone or you might be trying to do too much. Now, uh, here are a few factors for you to consider and for everyone else also to consider if you have the same uh, uh, questions, okay? Now, can the multiple sub-problems that you have picked up be represented as a single issue? Now, for example, a more enjoyable tool, right? Maybe that's the proper that, that's the umbrella proposition, right? A more enjoyable tool to use as opposed to the tedium of using some chore tools, right? Uh, maybe the sub problems are that it's confusing, it's unergonomic, it's, it causes repetitive hassle. So these are sub problems, and therefore, you know, if you are saying that let's do a more enjoyable tool, that's one way to aggregate them together um, and still clearly talk about it as one impactful point instead of feeling like you are trying to give it sufficient value by adding multiple things inside, okay? Now, um, second thing, this uh, can also be a good thing to consider that means combining the sub-problems uh, into, into one solution. It can also be a good thing to consider if the sub-problem is too small, right? And solving it alone still leaves the overall product or solution riddled with problems that make it invalid. Um, in, this case, uh, in this case, you might want to shift to solve an issue that matters more to the end user. This is not a simple matter to, uh, this is not a simple matter to judge because sometimes a small little annoyance inside a product um, or a process uh, that is eventually resolved can be why people drastically prefer one product over another. Now, on the other hand, um, you know, a small issue can be so non-essential that people would rather tolerate it than taking action to eliminate uh, the small issue by adopting a solution. So, you know, uh, it really depends, right, on whether the small sub-problem uh, matters or not. Now, we found that one good way to do an intuitive assessment of this is to simply ask uh, whether you or the end user would really buy it for that benefit, right? If it's... Uh, Something that because of that change that you did, even even though it's a very small problem, people would buy and prefer it, um, then uh, maybe it's sufficient, okay? Now, third point. On the other hand, right, a dedicated solution on a small slice of the problem is usually um, much easier to create. But not only that, you know, its focus often makes it more elegant, uh, simple, and eventually easier to use for people. Kind of like a better screwdriver or a better tweezer or better cutter compared to what you would get in a Swiss Army knife. Now, granted, it is not really the fault of the Swiss Army knife. Uh, the Swiss Army knife excels at being comprehensive and compact, but it doesn't excel at being a good singular tool to use one function that you need to keep on using and using and using, okay? So the question in your case, uh, Zhi Heng, would be, does your context call for something which does multiple things well? 
in the sense of multiple sub problems done well together, or does it better suit one killer function done really well? Okay, so uh, we come back to the question: Can you solve um, multiple sub problems at once with one proposition? Yes, you can. I would try to aggregate them together and describe them as one thing so that you see uh, if that pitch sounds good to yourself as, as an initial assessment or to your end user. If you instead uh, opt for focus on one sub problem or one sub issue, when you try to pitch that idea to yourself, you could assess if it sounds too minor for anyone to really care about it. Okay? Or um, if it was positive, meaning that people do care about it, uh, would it actually create uh, a, a even better response because you know uh, people say that finally someone did something about this annoying issue. All right? Okay, so let's talk about your next question, uh, which is about iterations. Uh, how do you go about uh, the iterations part of the exercise in segment one? Uh, do you continu continuously improve one design based on the five uh, criteria that has been uh, mentioned in that sequence, right? Or do you um, do uh, that original idea modified in five variants? Now, let's go to where the board is here. Uh, it's probably going to look something like that, where you have one idea over here, and then Jiheng's question is, do you modify it once with resonant pivot, modify it again with reduced ambition, um, and then do it sequentially like that until you get to the end and you have some kind of a super good idea based on you know all the steps of improvements you have done right do you do that or do you do this right let me draw an alternative take this one idea uh, iterate it this way and then go back to the same idea iterate it with this other one right uh, and so on and so forth right essentially you're going to get you know um, different types of ideas throughout uh, these five iteration factors. Um, well, <laughs> there are a few things I want to say, okay? Um, while we present a framework in this simplified sequential manner, uh, what you can guide yourself by are two principles. Firstly, no framework works 100% of the time. All right, frameworks, okay, second principle, frameworks are meant to help you get to results they are not the rule to govern and restrict your creative process. What this means is that if you find that your ideas are getting better by using the iteration factors in a different kind of sequence as suggested in this framework here, then in your case, you should definitely do that instead of letting the formatted sequence here restrict you. Now, if you find it more productive applying uh, to applying the iteration factors uh, to each of uh, each, each one wants to the original idea, which means like in the green case, instead of that building up as opposed to the red uh, doodle here, right? then please feel free to do so. Um, it will always be dependent on the exact idea at the point in time that you have created. Now, an idea that is relatively problem-free, um, say you have, let's draw this here, like you have an idea that, like that, all right? So let's, let's call this an idea that is relatively problem-free. Um, it could become five differently improved ideas because you've uh, looked at all the iter iteration factors one at a time uh, to create five variations on this original idea. And that's quite productive, right? To get uh, five good ideas from one uh, already quite good idea. Now, an idea that is a bit more problematic could really benefit from a series of progressive improvements to it as um, illustrated here in that red one. Now, the tricky part Right, is to know where your idea currently stands because that judgment call, as much as it may seem to be clear, is really not so obvious based on all the years of innovation work that we've seen. Right? Um, it's not really easy to tell if an idea is kind of the good enough one that you know, maybe you can just do one evolution to it and do different evolutions to it, uh, you know, to the same idea. Or is it one that really needs you to press it many, many times to um, force it to further improve, okay? So it's not very obvious. Now, how I would do, uh, since it's not obvious, is to test both approaches, right? Because nothing is really stopping you from seeing if an already good idea can be pushed further if you 
persisted on evolving it one more time according to these iteration factors. Um, now, when you try this and if it's not fruitful, you can of course abandon the sequential way to do it. Now conversely, when you think it seems productive to evolve an idea um, using each of the factors um, and applying it you know, almost always to the original idea, um, then uh, try that and see if you get uh, ideas that when uh, changed in that way, uh, become something that you are much more excited about. All right? So all in all, uh, rules in innovation are meant to be helpful and they are also meant to be broken at some point. Um, the eventual deciding factor is whether you get results with it and really not how well you stuck to the process. The framework here can help most people get to perhaps 70% of the way. So don't, don't ignore its intended constraints, you know, including that sequence that has been uh, charted out for you. Um, but don't be trapped by it either uh, if you find a better way to tweak it for yourself. Now, there are many tweaks you can do, right? Uh, apart from just... Uh, going back to the original idea and then working on it. Um, you could also try jumbling up the sequence of the iteration factors. Uh, it could work. So test it and judge.